Hello, Pray and Share Warriors. I'm going to plug my fan in. There we are. That's good. I got. <laughs> I have all my USB ports filled up right now. I'm copying some stuff to a flash drive and have everything. It looks pretty funny. But thank goodness you can't see how funny or how crazy it looks. Well, I hope you had an awesome Thursday. It is so good to be here. I missed last night. This has been a really weird week for me. So I've decided to delve into Psalms. So I thought we could delve into that tonight. We've been we completed Psalm 119. So I thought we'll just start with Psalm 1. And we'll read what my Bible says about Psalms. I may even get my study part over here and see what it says. It might say something more. Oh my. As you can tell, I'm not really prepared tonight. I uh, I cooked some really good pork chops, though. They were so ugly, and I was just like, these are going to be horrible, but they were so good. I told my husband, I said, you know, these look like what we used to eat as kids. I said, maybe it's more like what we should be eating. All right. Here we are. I think I'll read that out of the study part when I get ready. But anyway, I am so happy to be here. And I uh, have lots of praises. Things that were going on that I thought, oh my, we're not ever going to get that accomplished. But God is good and He is our protector and our provider. And he's our healer. My daughter is doing better. My friend Josie is doing better. Um, this new variant that um, was COVID is very, um, I think it has some different symptoms. I think um, maybe it lasts longer. Maybe I just didn't get all the symptoms the first time. I don't know. I don't want, I don't want to redo it though. I, I don't want to do that. Okay, well, let's jump into some prayer. God, we just thank you for the fact that you are sovereign over all things, God. You are on your throne and you are in control, God. There is nothing that gets by you. God, you are our protector, our creator, our provider, our sustainer. You are our shelter in the storm. You are our strength and our refuge, God. You are our everlasting Father. You are from everlasting to everlasting. And you will always be, God. You are magnificent and mighty and powerful. And you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness. You are loving and kind and compassionate and caring. You are... Um, faithful. You are trustworthy, God, and you are patient. You want none to perish. You want all to come to know Jesus as their Savior. And you want to offer eternal life for everyone, God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. We pray for the lost, God. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home, God. We pray for them to see where they are, to come back to you, to repent, to let you reconcile the relationship that they once had with you. God, we pray for all these disasters. We pray for Afghanistan, God. We pray for these Christians. We pray for these Americans. We pray for these people that helped our soldiers, God. We pray for protection for all of them. We pray, God, that you would give them a peace, God. Help them to trust you. 
we pray that our soldiers would be sent back over there to help them get safely out of that country. It is dispis it is it is disgusting the way that this was handled, God. It is disgusting. But God, you see everything that goes on. And we know that you have control of all things, God. God, we just pray for all the disasters that are happening on top of this. We just pray, God, that um, you would be with these people, that you would meet their needs. God, that they would see the hands and feet of Jesus. That they would see the loving compassion of Jesus. God, we pray for the countries that are um, protesting against their governments. God, we pray for success for them. We pray for the incident in Washington, D.C. today, God. I just really have my doubts about the whole situation. But that's because there is no trust. I have no trust for our government. They have continuous, continuously lied to us in the truth is found out later about six months later the truth is revealed so God there is no trust I have no trust for them I trust only you and you alone God and I pray for all the people that are sick with COVID God I pray for healing for them because there would have been a whole lot of more a lot more people dead the first time around had it not been for healing prayer. Prayer is most important, God. I pray, God, for people to do what's right for them, to make their decisions according to what you would have them do. God, I pray for my daughter. I pray for continued healing for her and for Josie. For anyone else that's sick, I pray for Ruth Ann that has RSV. God, I just pray that you would heal her body and that you would give her strength. God, there's just so much, so much going on. I want to thank you, though, for some things. I want to thank you that my car got fixed, God. I'm so thankful for that. I want to thank you for provision of the things that we need, God. I want to thank you that um, my daughter did not have to stay in the hospital yesterday. I know she was afraid, God. I praise you for giving her peace and for giving her strength, God. God, I pray for... Um, It's just so much to pray for, God. I pray for the people on the front lines in the medical um, of this disease and law enforcement and our military. God, I pray for protection and strength for all these, for their families, God. Just pray for them. I pray that you would eradicate this disease, God. So what I read about Israel having the cure, God, that Israel would share that cure with the whole world and we could eradicate these vaccines that are debil debilitating people and killing many people, God, that they would be eradicated also. God, you are magnificent and powerful. When we lay all these things at your feet, God, we pray for people that have lost loved ones. We pray for peace, comfort, and strength. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, my pray and share warriors. That was kind of long. It's kind of a long prayer that kind of got out some of the frustration that I have about some of the things that I'm seeing going on, like Afghanistan and how it is deja vu from 
when we left all of our equipment for ISIS and we thought that the Iraqi army was going to defend the Iraqi people, but that didn't happen. It looks like we might have learned our lesson from that, unless maybe it was on purpose. I don't know. God knows. God knows every little detail that they that they think they have hidden from God. He knows it all. They're not hiding nothing from Him. At all. And we are victorious through Jesus Christ. We will always be victorious because He overcame. And through Him, we will overcome also. Alright, well let's delve into Psalms. I'm going to get my big study Bible here. Since my friend Ruth Ann has been sick, I haven't been taking my big Bible to church. So, let's see what... I think this is John MacArthur study Bible. We'll see what... I think... It's a women's study Bible. I don't know, it may be all these women that are commentaries. I thought it was. No, I think it's all these women that are listed in the front, and I'm not even going to say. Alright, so the author, the author of Psalms. The Book of Psalms is a collection of worship songs written by a variety of authors over an extended period in Israel's history. The superscriptions, titles, and headings of some of the psalms identify them with certain individuals or groups. Other psalms contain no reference about to authorship. The individual most frequently mentioned is David. Yes, David, David wrote a lot of the psalms. His name is mentioned. And the entire book of Psalms generally is associated with him. He was recognized as the sweet psalmist of Israel, 2 Samuel 23.1. The phrase of David appearing in the titles of many psalms may also be translated to, to David or for David, conveying the sense of belonging to the Davidic, collection of psalms. Other individuals and groups associated with certain psalms includes Asaph, Solomon, Ethan, Moses, and the sons of Korah. So this is the date. The nature of the book of psalms as a collection of songs for use in Israel's worship makes it difficult to assign a date to the entire book. The Psalms were written at various times throughout Israel's history. The superscriptions of some of Psalms identify the precise historical setting. Um, for example, Psalm 51, David's prayer for forgiveness after he committed adultery with Bathsheba, was probably composed during the 10th century BC. In contrast, Psalm 137, is a song of God's people who went into Babylonian captivity, 586 BC, and remained in ca captivity until 538 BC. Edict of King Cyrus of Persia permitted the, ex the exiles to return to their homeland. Certain psalms composed by individuals were probably modified later for use in the worship assembly. The book of Psalms is a part of the section of the Hebrew canon known as the writings. Wow, I am learning a lot that I did not know about Psalms. I have read them many, many times. Okay, well I think we're going to save some of this background for just a little bit every night. I think that's a good deal. Okay, so let's Sorry, my eye itches. Let's move on to Psalm 1, which talks about the righteous and the ungodly, which is what I was talking about a while ago. 
the way of the righteous and the end of the ungodly. There will come an end to the ungodly. And if you're on that path, get off. Get off and come to Jesus as fast as you can. It leads to destruction. It looks great. It might have a lot of money and things and fame, but it leads to destruction, and there is no way out. Okay, the way of the righteous and the end of the ungodly. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners. So again, this path, this, this wrong path, the path that leads to destruction. As godly people, we don't want to be on that path. We want to be on the narrow path with Jesus. That's where we want to be. Nor sit in the seat of the scornful. We don't want to be sitting with these people either. Because God's wrath is coming. God's wrath is coming. He is going to exact his wrath on all unrighteousness. I'm surprised he hasn't already. He's much more patient than I could ever think about being. Because there's a lot of innocent babies that are going through a lot of bad things. And I don't know. That's bad. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. So again, the law of the Lord. His delight is in the law of the Lord, in the word of God. That's where his delight is. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He thinks about this God's word day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season whose leaf also shall not wither and whatever he does shall prosper so these this is the way of the righteous man and these are the rewards of the righteous man Whatever he does shall prosper. This is the path of the ungodly man. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. But the thing is, God doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants none to perish. Like John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes on him shall not perish but receive everlasting life. I think that was paraphrased. Let me flip over here and see how close I got. My problem is I have different I have different versions. All right. Well, let's read it out of the Bible. That's the best way. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now I want to go a step further, because I like this step further in John 3.16. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. 
And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil for everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed but he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God so that was a comparison too of godly and ungodly just like we read in Psalm 1 The godly will be blessed. The ungodly will be condemned. So which side are you on tonight? Are you on the godly side? Are you walking with Jesus on that narrow path? Sometimes it's lonely. Sometimes you're alone. It's just you and Jesus all alone. Because sometimes people do not want to walk the narrow path with you. So think, search your heart. Is Jesus in your heart? Is Jesus your Savior tonight? Are you the blessed man? Or are you the ungodly man? If you're the ungodly man, just like John 3.16 says, there's hope. All you have to do is call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. It's not hard. I don't know why more people don't do it. I know people don't want to give up things that they like that God, in God's word, says is sin. I know that's a big part of it. I think, too, a lot of times people do not think that they're worthy to have the love of God. But Jesus, salvation through Jesus, is what makes us worthy. I'm not worthy to have the love of God. I'm not perfect. I am a sinner saved by grace. We are all sinners saved by grace if we're saved through Jesus. Jesus is the one that made the sacrifice, not us. We just accepted an invitation that was given to us of eternal life that God supplied through Jesus, his son. All right, well, let's do a salvation message. How do we want to do it tonight? What is this? Faith. I don't, want, I don't feel led to do that one tonight. I think I'm going to do this one. God's invitation into his heaven. Because we talked about being invited through Jesus. Now, there is only one way to come, and that is through Jesus. So, have you ever been invited? Has anybody ever asked you if you would like to accept Jesus as your Savior? Has anybody ever asked you if you would like to have eternal life? The time is now to respond to his invitation. So I'm going to read some scriptures that go with salvation. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Like I said, I'm a sinner saved by grace. Only by grace am I sitting here. Even wanting to share God's truths with you and wanting to share the gospel. It's only by grace. I could be anywhere else. Uh, Romans 3.10 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 God commandeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5.8 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Romans 6.23 Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, 
that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That it's not, it's not hard. It's not hard. You don't have to have all these scriptures memorized. I'm just showing you some scriptures that go with salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. So if you'll look behind me, this picture is the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. <laughs> that's, that's so weird. They're not in the same place. Anyway, this picture is the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven, and this is what the scripture is about. And John saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Revelation 21, 2 through 3. So this is a very short prayer of salvation. And if you, if you would like to accept this invitation into God's heaven for eternal life through his son, his one and only son, Jesus Christ, then repeat these words after me. Now, it is not this prayer that saves you. It mm -hmm. is the belief in Jesus. So if you want to forego this prayer and pray your own prayer, then that is fine. But it is a guideline because some people just really don't know where to start. Okay? Dear Lord Jesus, I admit that I am a sinner. Please forgive me. I believe that you are God's one and only Son that came to teach, heal, love, and forgive. You died on the cross for all sinners. You rose from the tomb on the third day. You ascended into heaven, and you will come back to usher your church into heaven. I confess you as my Savior, inviting you into my heart to live and reign forever. Thank you for the gift of salvation. Please give me strength to withstand the temptations in my life. Help me to praise and glorify you daily and help me to grow in my relationship with you daily through Bible study and prayer. In your precious name, Jesus, I pray, Amen. Okay, if you pray, prayed this prayer and accepted Jesus as your Savior, then welcome to the Kingdom Family of God. Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life and the angels are rejoicing my child just broke through the door i'll be with you in a minute okay it's daddy not sh daddy's in there with the tv apparently he's watching something boring do read god's word every day and pray and praise God every day. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, His Son. And when the rapture comes, you will go with Jesus forever to our forever home. This is our forever home right here. This is it. 
Mm -hmm. It may look different when we get to it. But this is a depiction of it where the beauty is unimaginable. The love, the joy, the peace, the unity, the harmony is perfect. Like nothing can spoil those things. There is no drama. There is no illness. There is no pain. There is nothing bad. Nothing bad that we have here on this earth are we going to find in heaven. God has prepared a perfect place for us to live forever and ever. So pray that God will lead you to a church that preaches out of the Bible, that teaches out of the Bible, and that you will follow up with baptism just like Jesus did. All right. Well, I am going to do the, the blessing from God out of my Bible, number 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. We all need some peace. There's lots of countries that don't even have any peace. Right now we have freedom, so I plan to embrace it while we have it. I don't know what the future holds, but God does. So I totally trust Him with whatever happens. I trust Him. I'm going to pray for the things that I feel like um, need to happen. But ultimately, it's up to Him. He answers three ways. Yes, no, not now, sometimes wait. Well, I guess wait and not now is the same thing. Yes, no, and wait. And we have to respect all three of those answers. We don't always get what we pray for. And sometimes we get what we pray for later on. Maybe it's just not time. So please do not give up. Continue to pray. Continue to let your petitions made known to God. Continue to praise. Continue to pray for others. Be an intercessory prayer warrior for others. All right. Well, I'm going to pray just a very, very uh, short prayer. And I'm going to get off of here. I've already fed him, but I'm pretty sure that what, what Ricky is watching is not is boring him okay make sure he's not chewing on something he doesn't need to be chewing on god we just come to you and we just thank you god we just want to give you all the glory honor and praise that you deserve god only you are worthy you are worthy of all of our praise you sent us jesus to give us eternal life god we are thankful for that too we love Jesus. We want to follow in his ways, God. We want to be the hands and feet of Jesus. We want to be the loving compassion. We want to be all things that you want us to be, God. Please mold us and make us as you would like to, to make us for your glory, God, for your plan, for your purpose. God, we just pray. I pray for Josie and her family, God. I pray for continued healing for Josie. I pray, God, for her family. I pray for protection and provision and blessings for her sisters and their families, for her brothers and their families, and for her children and their families, God. Just all blessings, all provision, all protection, God. All guidance. Please give them guidance also, God. Continue to heal Josie. Just help her to feel better every day. We thank you that Mike feels better. And we just pray for the boys that you would protect them, including Austin, God, that they would not get sick with this disease, God. I pray for my daughter that you would continue to heal her. And I thank you that yesterday that you met her in that ER, God, and that she was not alone. 
I thank you for her husband and all the tender care that he has given her while she's been sick. I just pray, God, for um, miraculous healings for so many people, God, that I know. And uh, I just pray that you would be with their families and give them strength, God. We pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength. Again, we lift up the people of Afghanistan to you, God. And we just pray for all truth, all truth in all things, to rise above any lies that we have been told, God. And that it will not be denied. And that people will open their eyes and their ears to the truth, God. They'll open their hearts. They'll see things clearly for the first time in their lives. And God, that they would be drawn to Jesus so that they could be saved. So that they can receive eternal life, God. And live with you in Jesus and the Holy Spirit all the saints, all the angels for eternity, God, in our forever home that you have created and that Jesus has gone to prepare for us. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, well... Well... Y'all have an awesome rest of your evening and an awesome tomorrow. Tomorrow is already Friday. I was supposed to do something this week, and it just has not worked out with all the things that I have had going on this week. So I am going to try to get that done that last week of August, and that is my presentation for Unbound. I'm going to start studying. I ordered me another computer today. I'm starting to clean my computer that I have now out. And um, I'm going to let Seth use it for school beginning in September. So that's what I'm working on tomorrow. So y'all have an awesome rest of your night. Uh, much love and cyber hugs. And hey, my friend Josie, I'm getting off of here. <laughs> Do you have any prayer requests? I already prayed, but I can always pray again. Oh, you too, Josie. Are you feeling okay tonight? Yeah, I did pray for everyone. Okay, well, I'm going to get off of here. So much love and cyber hugs. Good. I'm glad you're feeling better. Until I see you again, good night.